Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. I guess summer is here, and that means it's motorcycle season. So what are we working on today? My neighbor brought his 1980 Yamaha XS650 over. Uh, pretty cool, classic style, you know, v or, uh, straight twin. Um, pretty neat bikes. And his complaint was the battery wasn't charging. Like, he could ride it for an hour and then flat battery okay so charging system complaint he brought it over I verified yep it, actually when you had the key on and you had it running it was draining the battery pretty quickly so let's um, look at the theory and operation of these charging systems and to compare to a known good I have my own 1979 Yamaha XS 750 identical charging system and we'll see what's wrong with this bike. Now, I diagnosed it already, and the customer repaired it himself, and he said it's still not charging. So, is it a comeback? Well, we'll see. If I was wrong in my initial diagnosis, obviously there's no charge to the customer, and we'll you know fix it up. However, if there's a separate issue, if there's a different issue than the one I uh, diagnosed the first time, there will be a charge. Now he's my neighbor, so I'll give him a discount. But still, this is how, um, at least, I operate my shop. If the customer decides to do the repair, him or herself, I can't be responsible for the quality of those repairs. And in this case, well, we'll see um, if there's anything wrong with the repairs. But let's jump into the theory and operation. So one reason that I'm a huge fan of these 70s Yamaha motorcycles, the electrical systems are generally very good, better than Honda, Kawasaki, or Suzuki. Now why is that? So the charging system is actually very similar to an automotive, modern automotive alternator. So you see here, we have a three phase alternator, and then this IC voltage regulator with rectifier. And to regulate the voltage here, you see this field coil. The regulator energizes the field coil and excites the alternator and keeps the voltage at, you know, the preset 14 volts. So, you know, at idle, when the alternator is spinning slower, you need to have more current going through the field coil to keep the current going. As the engine spins faster, the current decreases here and that avoids cooking your battery, you know, over over voltage. On other bikes, they just have like a permanent magnet alternator that keeps putting out current uh, proportional to the RPMs and then the regulator just grounds out the extra current and then like burns up the points in here or whatever. This is a much more robust system um, compared to the other Japanese bikes. So, a couple things to check here. We have the stator, we have the field coil, which is actually part of the rotor. There are brushes, just like in the automotive um, style. And then this IC voltage regulator with rectifier. So when the customer brought his bike over the first time, he said he already replaced the regulator rectifier. That didn't work. And then um, he said he replaced the brushes that contact the rotor. You see the slip rings right here. That didn't work. And finally, my diagnosis last time was the rotor was shorted out, and we'll see exactly why. So now that we know how the system works, let's see how a known good bike operates and take it from there. All right, so on my own XS750, here's the voltage regulator and rectifier assembly. You see the three white wires come from the alternator, then the big red and the black um, you know, these are going to the diodes in the rectifier. So I'm just measuring battery voltage right here. We have 12.8 volts. Now the regulator, there's a separate plug. We have a brown, a green, and a black. So what are the brown, the green, and the black? So the black is just the ground. The brown 
is a constant power when you turn the key on we should have power on the brown wire and then the regulator grounds out the control side of the field coil on this green wire and regulates the current in the field coil okay so I'm measuring the current on the field coil right now and the voltage so let's start it up at idle we should see a pretty high current here since the engine is spinning slowly and then when I rev it up that should decrease and the voltage should you know stabilize at 14 volts so let's fire it up make sure it's in neutral there we go it's in neutral About 3 amps going through the coil, we're at 13 volts. Let's raise the RPM a little bit. See that drop? This goes up to 15. And as the RPM drop, at a low idle it, it doesn't charge, but our current should max out. About three amps is the maximum. Maximum current there. We can even put our voltmeter lead on the control wire for the alternator, the green one. Let's see if we stuff it in there. See, it says 0.8 volts. So that's basically full field right now. If it's zero, it's full field. And if this voltage goes up, there's less current going through the field coil. So if I rev it up, so you saw that went up to about six volts. It was reducing the current in the field coil. So this is a known good system. Now let's go to the broken bike and do some measurements. So, by the way, before we go to the broken bike, there are specs for the resistance specs for the stator coils and the field coil, and also you can check the diode separately in the uh, rectifier. So, the field coil, the spec here is let's see, field coil green black, about four ohms. Since we're here, let's just go ahead and check that. So, I'm going to put my leads across the field coil, the brown and the green. Switch it to ohms. Make sure I'm making good contact. Okay, right about four ohms, perfect. That's, that's the spec, plus or minus 10%. Now we can go to the broken bike and you'll see why I called a bad rotor. All right, so here's our old rotor. And if we measure across the slip rings, it should be about four ohms. This is the field coil. You can see the windings right in the rotor. So the more current that goes through here, the more magnetic field this thing has. And as it rotates through the stator, which is part of the crankcase cover, you'll get more current, more voltage. So let's just measure across these slip rings. 1.5 ohms, not four ohms. So when I first saw this bike, the, uh, the regulator was pumping 10 amps through the field coil. It was actually limiting itself to prevent it from burning up. You can see this is why this thing has heat sinks on it, because it does get warm, but it was, it was basically um, sending 10 amps through the field coil and the alternator just wasn't you know wasn't working I measured the resistance it was way low so the windings in here are actually beginning to short out and the alternator is not working <clears throat> that's exactly why I called a bad rotor bad field coil okay so the customer replaced that now first check you want to do is well let's make sure we have four ohms on our field coil you measure across the brown and the green. What do you see? 
open circuit. <laughs> he also said his uh, his headlight didn't turn on, and the headlights on these things on like 79 and up are wired that when you start the bike, the headlight comes on, and that relay is energized by one of the uh, white wires coming from you know, from the stator. So this alternator is dead right now, and instead of a shorted field coil, we have an open field coil. So what does that tell you? Something wasn't installed properly. Either the new rotor is defective, which I doubt, or the brushes in here aren't making contact, or there's a wiring problem when you took it off, maybe some wires are damaged. I don't know. But regardless, um, this is a, a new problem, different problem. Um, we know this thing is bad. That was the right call the first time. Now we have to diagnose why there's no continuity through the field coil after the customer installed his own rotor. So let's get in the shop, pop off this crankcase cover, and see what we find. All right, let's pop off this uh, crankcase cover. Remove the foot peg. Okay, I gotta remove the uh, shift lever. There we go. Just a whole bunch of five millimeter bolts around the perimeter there we go okay so there's our brand new rotor and it looks like here there are two brushes so what we can do is measure the resistance across these two brushes just to see if they're making contact, see if we need to go any further, or if there's a wiring problem. See this wire goes here, and then looks like here, behind the sprocket, up to there, you know, towards the uh, towards the bike. So let's uh, let's do a quick resistance measurement. All right, here we go. Place your bets now. From here to here, open circuit. I know my leads work. Oh well. Now what if we measure across these slip rings? Let me see if that's possible. Maybe from there to there. That's one slip ring, zero about zero ohms. Guys, there's no continuity across these slip rings. What the heck? Here's the original rotor. That's, that's the one that's shorted out. Slip rings look identical. He said he got this rotor from Mike's XS. Now I don't know if it's rebuilt or not. Let's see. So it's open circuit. I'm not kidding. That slip ring. I can't see my meter. Obviously the slip ring is continuous, but across the slip rings <laughs> we have infinity. This new rotor is junk. It's open. Open circuit. So the customer didn't do anything wrong. He just got a bad part. That's kind of a bummer. I'll give him a call. 
maybe an eBay used one would be better than refurbished one. I'm just trying to see if this looks OEM or not. Yeah, it does look different, doesn't it? It's gray. This is kind of chintzy. I guess the the contacts here for the slip rings are epoxied in here and here. Yep. That blows my mind. Huh. I guess we can pop off this piece. Up his gasket here. And all the gaskets behind the wires. Okay. See, there's the, the stator. And there's the new rotor. Ah, so it does look rewound. See, this is all epoxied in. This is wound, that's glued. Oh man. What if I measure the resistance from here to here? Nope, open circuit. There's a break in that winding. Bummer. Effective rotor. How about that? Alright, back to the Yamaha XS650 with the charging system problem. So, if you remember last time, the replacement rotor was defective. It was open circuit. So the owner, he got two more units. One from eBay. And then Mike's XS sent him a replacement for the defective uh, defective unit. So, um, the owner said he put on the eBay rotor. He couldn't get the bike started. He put on this rotor, the replacement Mike's XS rotor. Still couldn't get the bike started. Like, completely dead. It, it ran before. So, here we are. I want to get back to square one. Um, he said with... The regulator plugged in, he, the electric start didn't work, and this headlight warning bulb kept coming on the dash. So let's recreate everything. So regulator's plugged in, everything's plugged in. Do a quick resistance check right out the brushes here since it's uncovered. About seven ohms. Okay, that's good. This is a good rotor. You check the resistance here. I already did that. Seven ohms. So turn the key on. Headlamp. Nothing on the start button. What the heck? And he said when he unplugs the regulator, then the bike cranks, but it still doesn't start. Let's see, you got choke, you got fuel. Okay, well, at least we're back to square one here, <laughs> but let's, uh, let's figure out why when you plug this sucker in, it doesn't start. And the headlight relay turns on. So let me get this plugged back in, and we'll diagnose that problem. Alright, so plug back in. Headlamp warning comes on. Electric start doesn't work. On these, you know, past 78, there's no headlamp switch. There's just high and low beam. Our headlamp is not working. And it's automatically forced on when the 
engine runs. And one of these white wires coming from the, uh, the stator switches the relay here. See, there's two relays. One's for the headlight. The other one's like a safety cutout. So you can't use the starter when the bike is running. So it seems like it thinks that the bike is running. Let's check the voltage on these white wires. There should be nothing there. The bike is off. So on the red wire, we have... Okay, 12 volts. That's fine. On the white wire, I'll pick any one. They're all connected. 7.8 ohms. That's the strangest thing. And if I turn the ignition key off, that voltage goes away. And this only happens when you're plugged into the rectifier regulator assembly. I'll prove that if we're plugged in. So right now, if you turn the key on, you get no voltage. The only possible thing could be is a short in, in the regulator. Well, luckily, we still have the original. Let's plug that in. Okay. Do the same check on the white wire. And key on, you got like 10 millivolts. That's a difference. Will it start? Okay, started. Headlamp came on. Yep. So, <laughs> apparently the eBay regulator went bad at some point. Um, was it bad? I, I guess it might have been bad out of the box because, let's see, what came first, the chicken or the egg? And if you remember, that sucker, the original rotor was shorted and it was drawing 10 amps through the regulator. It was, it was limiting it, but I think it burnt up. And then, you know, the rotor was replaced. That went open circuit. It was replaced again, but the regulator is still bad. <laughs> so it's like, it's like, you can't make this stuff up. So we have to reinstall the original regulator. That's step one. I would put on the eBay rotor because this one might last a day. I'm not, you know, can't guarantee it. And we have to figure out why when you run it, the headlamp turns on. We have no headlight. So this headlight was a replacement from Mike's XS. <laughs> I said, do you have the original headlight? And I was like, yeah, here it is. Well, guess what? It works. High beam, low beam. Unbelievable. So we need the original headlight, original regulator, and now we're going to install the eBay rotor. Hopefully this motorcycle will be ready for the season. Alright, so everything works, headlight, charging system, but we want to get the eBay replacement rotor on. And this one, the uh, resistance does measure the appropriate 5 ohms or so. Let's just double check that. Go across the two rings. Perfect, 5.8 ohms. So we're gonna pull off the aftermarket junk. Very easy to do. There's the uh, little Woodruff key. And this sucker should go right on here. I'm gonna spray a little WD-40, bolt this on, and make sure it's charging as it should. So we got the eBay rotor on here, and the bike 
is refusing to start. <sighs> Keep in mind, the pickup for the ignition system is right here, and it needs to see this. What is going on? Let's pop this cover back off. Oh no. This is the original. It has this little copper thing for the ignition pickup. This unit, unfortunately, does not <laughs> because it has to be from an earlier pre-1979 model. It's different. It does not have the pickup for the electronic ignition because the older ones use points. Ah, oh, that sucks. This is the wrong rotor for the bike. Well, that was an interesting little fiasco with the uh, Yamaha XS650 charging system. What should have been straightforward diagnosis and rotor replacement turned into three you know, total visits for me just because you know, all these factors kind of screwed things up. We have defective aftermarket parts because original parts are not available. Uh, on eBay, there was a, the year for that rotor was listed wrong. It didn't have the correct ignition pickup on the rotor. Luckily, the second aftermarket replacement rotor, the bike's been running and charging fine with that for a few weeks now, so fingers crossed that's going to hold up. Um, but the lesson of the day here is start off with a proper diagnosis. You know, the, the parts cannon was fired on this bike and, you know, the, the owner installed everything correctly. But we had a junk aftermarket rotor, junk aftermarket headlight, and junk aftermarket rectifier regulator assembly. Crazy stuff. A three out of three. Three strikes for uh, the eBay aftermarket parts cannon. <laughs> um, but, you know... It's uh, it is what it is. So the bike is mostly original now. Just the, the uh, aftermarket rotors on there. Hopefully it holds up. Um, don't throw your old parts away until the bike or the car is fixed and sent down the road. Uh, that's my recommendation. So thanks all for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.